That's what I like to hear. Uh, not sure how many of you guys have checked it out on the show floor, but be sure to uh, check it out. Uh, we have the game playable, so uh, we're looking forward to your feedback. Um, so I guess we can just get things started off. Why don't we go ahead and uh, start off one by one, and uh, why don't you guys introduce yourselves and state your name, your title, and what, you, what your role was in the development of the game. Hi. My name is Terry Spear, and I'm a senior designer, so I do a lot of level work, character, gameplay, things like that. I'm uh, Sean Miller, I'm the game director, so uh, I help put together the story and, uh, and work with uh, all the different teams, and programmers, designers, artists, and put the, putting it together. Uh, I'm Dave Cravens, I'm the cinematic director for Iowa Studio, so I did a lot of movies, and I wrote uh, dialogue as well. Very cool. We also have a great agent down there, and the laptop, he's our uh, marketing extraordinaire and uh, uh, manager of the social uh, community, the fan community, so you'll be hearing a lot from him uh, very soon. Uh, cool. Well, guys, why don't you guys start off by uh, maybe telling us a little bit about what the game is overall, what your vision was, and uh, what your overall uh, goal was in creating this game. Sure, I'll, I'll start off. Um, I don't know how many of uh, you have been uh, following it, so I'll, I'll just kind of touch off on, on what we've done. Um, at Highway Studios, we've become known for uh, being fans of Transformers, like uh, many of you guys. I mean, we've got more people that love Transformers than any other license that there is out there. It's one of those things where you work in video games, which is a fun job, it's a lot of hard work, but you don't always get to work on something that means a lot to you. And Transformers was something that if you were to walk around our offices in the months before we were working on Transformers games, you would have found just as many Transformers toys on the desks as you do today. It's something that, uh, you know, we all love, we play with them and with our kids, we have them on our desks, we buy the toys, we watch the shows. So when they gave us a chance to uh, bring that level of Transformers, uh, into the movie universe, that was a really interesting opportunity for us. Um, and the approach that we wanted to take was not to do a direct translation of the film, because we wanted to be able to come out before the film. I'm somebody, I like to get a little bit more information. Uh, I like to expand on uh, things a bit. You feel like you, you've just seen the movie, well, you've just seen the movie, you don't want to necessarily play through the stuff, you already know how it ends. So what the approach we took was to do a prologue, and Hasbro and Paramount were great about working with us to develop a story that expands on the universe of the film and supports it, builds up some of the characters, uh, some of the things that have been going on in between the, the two things. So uh, that, that was our, our, our general goal of how we approached the, the game. That also gave us some creative license to be able to uh, bring some of the things that we love especially about Transformers into the universe and kind of expand out on those things. Always with the goal to support what's going on in the films, but uh, I'd be lying if we don't try to look at ways to take some of our favorite things and kind of bring them in. I don't know if you guys want to add. I think it's really cool to be able to support the movie. I mean, I think the days of, like you said, see the movie, play the movie, no good. To be able to support and tell the story of what led to some of the awesome events that are going to come in the movie, I think was a great opportunity you know, to be able to, you know, be an important part of the lore of what led into, you know, the movie that's coming up. I think was was fantastic. I think you know, to piggyback on that, you know, we, we want to add our own things to it, but we also want to be very true to the style and the character of the universe um, that Michael Bay has done in the movie as well. And so you know, we took a lot of care, you know, studying the how they how he put his movies together, his action sequences, and his, even his cinematography. So, you know, to build upon that, um, I think was a lot of fun. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so, so you guys mentioned the prologue story and how you guys are kind of providing this, this kind of backstory to, to what's going to happen in the movie. Uh, who, who, who wrote the storyline and how did you guys come up with, uh, you know, these interactions between the characters and how did you determine what uh, kind of went on between the Autobots and the Seven Dogs before the movie? Um, well, the, the, uh, the story was a collaborative effort. Um, when we uh, were first coming to the project, we knew we wanted to do a, a, a prologue story. We took a look at the script, the things that were going on in the movies, and uh, we tried to come up with a, a, a 
backstory that uh, gave you a little more time with some of your favorite characters and uh, would uh, explain some of the things that you don't necessarily <coughs> look at, they don't necessarily uh, tell you a lot about. So um, the process that we used was to sort of block everything out, we sort of outline all the things that we wanted to do and, and, and map out the game. Uh, then I worked very closely with Dave and Terry on the story to, to flesh that out. On, uh, on, on Terry's case, it's really the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay of what was going to go into those, those, those levels. And he could maybe expand on that a little bit. And with Dave, it was digging into the, 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 the story that was behind each level, making sure it made sense in the, in the Transformers universe. Um, and making sure that the things that we were going to uh, have in here were going to deliver the kind of epic action that, that the films are also known for. Uh, so Dave did a lot of the, not only the core story uh, elements, but he worked on the dialogue, making sure that the, the, the things that the characters were saying and the things that we were, were, were going on were going to bring true to all of us. One of the cool things about being Transformers fans is we're really our, our, our first audience. When something doesn't ring true, we, we we're the first ones to call it out. So that, that was always kind of fun. I don't know if you guys yeah, I, mean, I think in regards to gameplay, you know, I helped the story. You know, the three of us, you know, flesh that out and made sure it fit with what we needed to do. But this was the first time we had we had brought the studio Transformers to Earth, and it was really important from a gameplay standpoint to make sure that they felt like giant robots, right? I mean, that's really important to making sure that you have the right scale. Make sure they feel powerful and destructive and, and make sure they really stand out in, in Earth. And so that's one of the first things that we focused on. Um, you know, it is a game after all, so we have to make sure it's fun. So making sure all the beats and all the elements are there, make sure it's fun to play, that was critical, hugely critical for us. Yeah, for me it's all about, uh, you know, my focus is bringing the personality out of the characters. I think that's that's really important you know, to fans, you know, to myself, too. You know, you're playing this game, but you also want to get a sense that um, the character that you're playing is, is true to you know, what you grew up with and what you're seeing in the movies. And uh, it's a lot of fun. You know, for me personally, I, I really like writing the, the banter back and forth between the characters when they're on a mission. I think that adds a lot of personality and flavor perhaps, to uh, you know, gameplay in general. So it's a, it's a good time. You know, one of the things, like the images that we have up here, you're, you're seeing some of the images that were uh, really uh, on some of the first and some of the later images. But these, these images of the, 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 the destroyed city and, and, and uh, of uh, you know, this battle in the car graveyard were actually two of the first images that were made uh, when we were talking about the story. And we wanted to, uh, uh, you know, have that epic city kind of a battle. And uh, we started talking about what characters would be in there, you know, who would, who would, be, who would be the, the enemies, and what would they be doing in here. And so our concept artists take these ideas that we, we put out, and they, they create these images that go on to inspire the artists who are building the worlds, as well as the designers who are creating it. You know, uh, one of the earliest ideas was the, the, the idea of uh, the, the fact that uh, if, if the Decepticons were going to want to try to stir up some, uh, some distrust between humans and Transformers, uh, what, what, would, what would they do to create a kind of a terrorist attack? And so what they do is they dig right into Detroit, which is, the, uh, of course, the, the home of the United States uh, auto industry. What very better to uh, sow the seeds of fear between uh, a robot that can turn into a, 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 a car than uh, have cars all over the city of Detroit and start turning into robots and destroying things. Because as humans, they can't tell who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. So it was really the catalyst for uh, some of the uh, early ideas behind uh, where we wanted to take this story. I think on top of that, you'll, you know, trust, right, in the Transformers, I think Sean made it uh, on the point that in, in the coming movie, right, um, humans still don't know what to make of you know, Autobots and Decepticons, and I think that's a theme that our game uh, plays with, and it expands and explores uh, a lot, because um, it's something that Megatron feels that he can exploit and, uh, and use as a weapon against the other ones. Is anyone rooting for the Decepticons? Am I the only one? Decepticons? Let's go, people! Decepticons! Yeah! 
Is that, is that your favorite Transformer? Do you want to talk about favorite Transformers? Yeah, yeah who, who's your favorite Transformer? Should I, should I, should I begin? Please. Soundwave.
great things about laser beam, right? If you think about how large sound wave is, big dude, they're all big dudes, but you have the opportunity to come to Earth as a transformer and feel massive, feel gigantic, and you know, obviously there's places you can't go. I mean, I'm sure you can, you know, break through walls and stuff, but there's places you can't go as a transformer, you're too big. You know, you're not going to cruise around an office building as a sound wave. But, having the opportunity to play as laser beak, you can get to places where you can't go as sound wave. You can explore areas you can't go as sound wave. You can work as a team, tandem, little buddy action. Um, and it's fantastic to be able to explore a space as a humongous robot and then visit that same space as something a lot smaller and just feel the entire space change. And it really plays out nicely. Like two dollar horn. Rashad, <laughs> <laughs> there's the same images up here that I remember it's pretty cool and I know I saw a warpath up there. Yeah, right, do you want to talk about what these images are? What these are? Sure. What these are? Um, we'll start, uh, if you can go to the warpath. You know, uh, Warpath is a character that uh, is not in the movie, uh, but um, they allowed us to, uh, he made sense of how, where we wanted to. We came up with a, a really good reason that we would need a giant Autobot tank. Um, it looks good. And uh, I'm not going to spoil it, but uh, it, it's kind of a, it's a there, there's a really cool moment that he gets to play out in here. Um, and the interesting challenge was to take the things that we loved about Warpath and then bring him into the Michael Bay universe and how to capture that kind of flavor. Um, and, uh, you know, to be able to deliver on the fact that he's, he's got the tank mode, he's got the giant gun in his chest. Uh, I, I really liked this, the way that this character came together for, for us. Um, some of the other characters that are up there are sort of some of the minion characters that uh, we, we were able to bring in. Uh, we have uh, our spin on the hatchling. Uh, that you saw from the, from the last movie. They play a role in, uh, in, in, in our game. So uh, we got to uh, work out uh, some uh, evolution of their form. Uh, and then um, we've got uh, some other Decepticons that you see uh, around, the, around the city. We didn't want you to constantly be fighting the same Decepticon soldiers all the time. So we had some different uh, uh, Decepticon soldiers we were able to bring in. Uh, and these guys are much smaller. These are uh, some of the smaller enemies. Um, this next one uh, is a, a character, uh, he represents an evolution of, of uh, a character in, through basically all the different uh, aspects of the Transformers. Uh, in, the, in the first film, you, you, there was a, uh, you'd see the, uh, the, the jet, cargo jet that was taking around the Autobots and the, the nest soldiers all the time. Well, he developed into the toy, the stratosphere. And uh, he had a, a bit of a following around the office, and he thought it'd be a great opportunity with the uh, with the introduction introduction of this uh, this stealth force uh, vehicle combat to be able to outfit what you would normally see as a, a cargo jet, and we can really pimp it out with uh, with, with awesome weapons and, uh, and, and extra jet controls to make him actually a really agile warrior in the air. Um, so you will you, you face off against Stratosphere uh, in. Uh, the battles that when you're playing on the Decepticon side at Starscream. And it was really fun to kind of outfit him with the weapons, design, design it. We started with the, with the uh, toy design and then we tricked it out a little bit to just uh, bring it forward into the look of things that you're going to see in the new film. And uh, that's always a, a really interesting challenge for us. Hey Sean, uh, you're looking at the concept there and I'm sure there's people that have questions or maybe want to hear about Stealth Force. And and that's a dude who's got a pretty sick Stealth Force mode. Did you want to talk about Stealth Force? Yeah, I'll dig into Stealth Force a little bit. Um, a, a lot of you guys are going to be familiar with the Stealth Force toys that are out there, uh, where uh, now you, you've got that access to all these uh, awesome, crazy, huge weapons in your vehicle form. Um, so one of the things we got to, got to play with, because this is going to be a, a key element of some of the vehicle combat you're going to see in the movie, and when I saw what they were doing with it, I, it, it, it light bulb went off, and it just became uh, a, a really driving force in uh, what we were going to do with our game design. Um, and uh, you see here, this is uh, uh, the Stealth Force uh, weaponry that we developed for, uh, for, uh, for Ironhide. What we did is we took a look at uh, we took a look at the toys, we took a look at the designs for the, the things that they had going on in the in the, in the movie, and. Uh, 
our, our artists put together a, a great melding that um, the idea was to capture the essence of those characters, not only in their robot form the vehicle, but also in this other form. So you've got Ironhide, the super heavy weapons guy, uh, his, his gigantic truck. Have you guys have seen that truck in there? I mean, that is huge. I still can't even believe how big it is in real life. <laughs> Uh, and when you see it, and, and, you, and he gets into the vehicle uh, stealth force mode, all the weapons pop out, and, and he, he gets almost like this tank-like kind of a feel to him. Um, one of the other things that we did, um, for us, we look at it the fact that uh, as a transformer, you're not a robot who turns into a vehicle, you're not a robot who drives a vehicle, you're not a vehicle who sometimes turns into a robot, you are a vehicle and a robot at all times something very natural to you. So from a control standpoint, we want you when you're playing the game to be able to feel as natural in all those forms. So uh, we, we, we also want to make sure that again, when you're in this mode that you aren't wrestling with your shooting controls. I also, I am a gamer. I didn't want it to be a gimme. I didn't want it to be something where we were just giving, handing you kills in your vehicle mode. So um, we uh, extended it out a little bit from what you're going to see in the films to add a mechanism that allows you to move side to side in vehicle form, just like you can in your robot. But the idea that as a robot, if I can develop technology that was going to give me weapons, I'd also want to be just as agile as I am in robot form. Doesn't mean you lose your vehicle form, you still have your regular vehicle form. You're going to see, uh, you know, uh, Bumblebee's got his arrow and Iron Eye's got his truck. But this just gave us a great opportunity to, to, uh, to extend this out for all these different characters. You're never far away from your guns. I think that was a critical element for me. Uh, you know, as a designer on the project, you know, it's cool to be a robot. Obviously, it's really cool to be a robot. But I didn't want to have to sacrifice players. You know, oh, I'm going to transform my vehicle because it's really cool to transform the Transformers game. But I can't do anything when I'm a vehicle except drive around and run away from combat. Well, that's not the case in this game. If you transform it into stealth force mode, you are fully loaded. I mean, stacked. Uh, we give the player. You know, there's reasons to be in robot mode, you know, there's abilities that you can do, and there's reasons to be in stealth force mode. Both are very potent forms, and, and that, was, that was one of the great things about adding stealth force to this game, is that you are kick-ass either way you look at it. I said that word again. Family show, family show. I'm a crazy guy. I think one of the cool things about, uh, you know, Michael Bay universe in particular are the incredibly hot cars. That he uses, right? You just take Bumblebee, you know, as as a, a Camaro, and, it, and it, it looks fantastic. And you know, like I want to drive that car. And you throw guns on top of that and rockets, and it just makes it that much cooler. Um, you know, and you get to do all that and control all that in our game. So I, 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 that was one of the funnest moments for me to see on playing through uh, some of the early levels of just having that kind of power at my fingertips and blowing stuff up. You can get a feel when you stop by the booth. We've got our, our, our uh, the uh, Bumblebee level is playable, so you can kind of feel what it is to to, uh, to be in that, uh, that stealth force mode in Bumblebee. Very cool. So uh, some some of you guys out there might be familiar with uh, Transformers: War of Cybertron, last year's game, which was always awesome. Hey, bye. Big improvements visually, I think, from Wolf and Cybertron. This one with 
is this going to be the explosions and the, the gun play and the gun fire and all that stuff? I think it's very dynamic. Um, you know, looking hard, but it's, it's just a lot of fun for me to watch. Um, but you know, he, uh, I think you know, mostly from my perspective, it was just choosing um, angles and shots and motions that you would find in, in uh, his kind of films. And it's, it's a you know, I'm a big fan of myself, and it was a lot of fun to emulate and uh, bring to the game. You know, the way that, uh, uh, that also the, the, some of the movie elements and, and the, the cinematic elements in our game play out is they, they're, they're, they're used obviously to, to help uh, tell the story, uh, but also uh, beyond that, you, you've got a lot of the, the, the dialogue. Um, that was something that was uh, kind of an interesting thing for us to do um, because we've got all of our, uh, kind of, uh, our background with a little bit more of the old school style of dialogue that, that they might have, and um, it was a really interesting challenge to find that voice yeah, that's, uh, that's true, within the movie universe and do something that still felt uh, as true. Uh, one, of the, one of my favorite uh, bits in the game where I felt it really worked really well is in Ironhide stuff, where you've got Ironhide and Ratchet and they're working together. And throughout the whole level, it's got a little kind of a buddy picture kind of a, a vibe. But well, they're, they're jamming at each other, it's, you know, it's like they've, they've known each other you know, forever and they, and they have, and they, and they have fun with each other, even in these, you know, desperate and serious situations. You just gave a game spoiler, man. You said that Iron Knight and Ratchet are going to roll together. Dude! Spoilers suck! <laughs> and if I can speak about one thing, someone will probably ask this, but I'm just going to go ahead and bring it out, right? Wait, wait, don't. No. Don't? No, I was going to. Okay. Don't movie games suck? I'll say it, in case there's any gamers out there. I think movie games, they traditionally have a rough time. They really do, because usually they're really rushed. And obviously they have to come out with the movie. A lot of times they're, see the movie, play the movie, right? And that's something we avoided straight away. We didn't want to do that. You know, as we said already, we're no prologue. I think the great part, and the great opportunity we have is we just made War for Cybertron. And we had a lot of time to develop the mechanics we used on Warp Cybertron. And so we built upon that. We had the opportunity to make all those mechanics even better. So it's a movie game that actually got tender loving care. We were able to give it the mechanics and the, and the appreciation from a character standpoint, from, a, from a, a gameplay standpoint. We were able to give it all the love that it deserves. And I truly believe that this will be this will be the best Transformers movie game ever. I'll say it. Quote me on that. You heard it here. <laughs> From your Terry Sparrow. Did you cry a little bit? Right. But I think, you know, to speak to that, at, at High Moon Studios, right, you know, any, any game that we do, we take a huge amount of pride and we don't do the game unless it's, you know, something that we feel we can have fun with. We don't make games that we don't want to play. You know? So, yeah. This, this movie game won't suck. Boom. It's a good time. Thanks, guys. So, uh, <laughs> Kelvin's going through the legal ease in his mind. Is this okay? I can't say that. Well, you guys talk about uh, you know this big epic kind of single player campaign uh, set in the prologue uh, right before the other movie. Now, I want to talk a little bit about multiplayer. Um, I know we have a video, and uh, I think we're about to queue that up. But before we start the video, can you guys talk a little about a little bit about kind of general overview of what the multiplayer is? Uh, like, will Terry be able to jump on as Soundwave and go head to head against Optimus, uh, controlled by Daniel? He'll kick your butt. Uh, yeah. so yeah. What is the essence? Of, what are the kind of features of the multiplayer? What did you guys uh, accomplish with, with the multiplayer offerings? Well, the multiplayer, what we did, we, we took a look at uh, the things that people were playing. We took a look at what the fans were playing and uh, what was Cybertron, as well as uh, just in general the most popular. When you, when you don't have uh, a, an unlimited amount of time to develop a game, you want to make sure that what you're going to do is going to be able to be the best. That rather than give you a bunch of things that uh, don't necessarily fit the movie license, but we're just shoving them in because uh, they, they kind of expect it to be there. We want to focus on the things that uh, people are going to want to show up, what we felt people are going to want to show up and play. So we look first at what we would want to do. And something that uh, is important to me, I come with the Transformers license because I love my Characters. I love my Optimus Prime, I love my, you know, uh, Soundwave, uh, Megatron, whoever that guy is, 
Transformers fans across the world all have their favorite guys, and I, I, I wanted you to be able to play as those characters. So uh, that is one of the key elements uh, in it. We have uh, our deathmatch, which is just uh, your, your, it's a standard deathmatch, except you've got the addition of being able to transform your vehicle uh, and the stealth force stuff. Um, and then um, we've got team deathmatch. It's going to give you the classic Decepticons versus Autobots matchups. Um, we also took a look at something that was very popular among our fans uh, for Cybertron, called Conquest. Um, sort of a uh, capture the node style gameplay that uh, is really a lot of fun. It's team based. Um, it's not surprising to me that the most popular game modes are, are the team based by stuff, especially for a, just for a franchise like this. So, um, you know, we put our, all of our focus and love into delivering that part of the experience. Make sure when you're, when you're playing, you, you're, you're, you're your iconic character, but it's also nice to be able to customize them. I imagine there's a few people in here that like to customize their transformers at home. So we still want you to be able to transform, and, you know, customize your, trans your transformers. So uh, you can do things like change your colors, you can change out weapons. You've got things uh, uh, put into classes that make it, uh, give you advantages in the different, in the different forms. Uh, give you a reason to want to be Starscream instead of wanting to be uh, Optimus. Um, and so the, the classes are built around the play style that come from being that kind of vehicle. Um, you always may maintain your iconic weapon, but you can swap out, swap out secondary weapons, you can swap out your special abilities if you wanted. Uh, if Bumblebee to be able to cloak, uh, you, then you can, you can uh, when you gain enough experience, you can swap out the ability and start to mix and match some of those to customize the game play kind of distill it, really. The approach that we took from the beginning, right, we said, we're 10 years old, you've got your favorite Transformer, sound good. and you're going to your buddy's house. You just want to play as Soundwave against whomever else, doesn't matter what their favorite Transformer is, but you're going to their house and you're going to play. That's what we wanted to emulate. You're going to the park, you're going to the playground, you're just going to have your favorite Transformer, and you're going to just kick each other's butts. That's, that's, we wanted to make sure we captured that essence, to be able to play as the iconic characters and just, just go at it, just see these, these icons just, just rumble. I, I think we should just show them. Oh, okay. Play the trailer! Show. Yes, play the trailer. <laughs>
types of media are trying to get what they're having it done, you know, for everybody to get together. For instance, I'm sure that uh, Michael Bay would want us call in and do his office every day. Hey, do you guys mind if we do this thing, right? <laughs> so we worked actually had a focus of the mediator there, helping us uh, make sure that those things work without having to necessarily bog down IDW or, or us necessarily with a lot of uh, a, a lot of extra things. So we flesh things out too in advance. You know, we worked out the story, we worked out the beats and these things we wanted to do. We have uh, very regular checkpoints when we call in and give updates and uh, the, the approvals process was actually really smooth with making sure those things go. Um, you know, the, the, I'm sure there are you'll find uh, discrepancies here and there because we you know, we, we we can't we don't work in the same offices and things like that. Yeah. But uh, I think that the general uh, flavor of things should feel like it all from the same, the same thing. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hello. As a, as a huge fan of Warp Cybertron and Code of Power Countdown to Extinction, um, first of all, I want to say that I love the game. I don't want to sound sarcastic or anything or disrespectful. But it felt like with certain aspects of the multiplayer, it felt certain issues were overlooked to get the game off the shelves. And I want to know, can the fan base be assured that issues with boundaries and the transformation animations have been improved, such as sometimes when you get too close to other players, sometimes you can be forced through the wall or even through the floor in certain parts of the game. You know, that's one of those things that uh, the benefit that we have uh, on, on building on, on where we already have been is we're able to take a look at some of those things that were, were, were difficult uh, and we're able to uh, make some improvements on there. I, I can't say that we've fixed every single thing. Uh, we, but we, we took a look, we actually we listened to what uh, what fans were, were having trouble with, what people weren't liking, and we did everything that we could to hit on a lot of those things. Um, transformation is a lot, uh, a lot oh, yeah. more smooth, smooth and solid, uh, and um, the, the you know we learned a lot of lessons about the building, the geometry, and all those types of things. There's some other things that you can't necessarily control. Uh, we'll work everybody with some of the other gaming things where when you're dealing with something like transformation, uh, you know, you know a network latencies and all those types of things. There are certain things that you may not be able to control, uh, and those kinds of things we did our best to address, but. You, know, you might still see a little one or two of those things. I do think we, we actually um, we made some really really good improvements. The general consensus we've got, uh, we do a lot of focus testing, you know, both on uh, fans and people who aren't even fans. We want to make sure that this can also be played by people who aren't necessarily uh, Transformers fans. And the general feeling was that, uh, that those things were, you know. We share a lot of the pet peeves that, that, that the community does, and this we're all gamers first, and that's those are the, the first things we try to tackle. Try to eliminate a lot of those things. I, I can guarantee that if there's something that drove you crazy, there there are at least ten people that lost sleep over it. Uh, and, you know, the, the second that thing hits the shelves. <laughs> but, but keep keep that feedback coming. You know, it's 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 great to have the fans so involved and so vocal about what they're liking, and we we want to hear it, we want to know it, and, and please you know, stay at it. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Uh, the first one, uh, I was watching the multiplayer trailer and noticed that the Megatron looked, looked like he was from Bridge of the Fallen, not Dark of the Moon. And I was wondering if, like, in the game, there was a way, you know, how the characters would change the movie, like Optimus, a jet fire, and then this movie's got the trailer. I was wondering if you could, like, switch between those different versions of the character in the multiplayer. Yeah, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Yes, I'm going to say yes to that. Yes. Uh, um, yeah. One of the things that's kind of cool about being this prologue story, right, is we get to explore. I talked about the, the, the transitions, what characters have been doing. Um, so we touch a little bit on why things are, 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 are different. And in multiplayer, you do get to play. You, you have the option to play Megatron in either one of his forms. Good eye, by the way. Yeah, nice job. And my second question is, um, I know later you're probably going to release downloadable content, like extra characters and maybe maps and stuff. And I was wondering if you were going to release maybe characters that might be overlooked, like the RC triplets or the destructive cons to be playable, <laughs> or um, characters from the first movie that's on the pressure of Brawl. You know, um, we don't we, we unfortunately I can't answer any questions on the downloadable content, but I'd like to, but I can't. Uh, I know uh, the, the, the RC, uh, the RC character is uh, one of those ones my daughter asked me about every single day. <laughs> That's the man keeping us 
down. You're such a jerk, Helen. <laughs> so I, I, uh, I you'll just have to stay tuned. We'll, we'll have some announcements about uh, what we put down the content. Okay, thank you. All right. Hello, gentlemen. Just a couple quick questions. Um, my first question has to be, uh, you know, one of the main reasons a lot of gamers like to, uh, you know, uh, play video games is to really play bad for those of us who are bad. Um, sorry for that word. Um, that was your after you complete the game. Is there any uh, unlockable playable, playable characters that might not necessarily be in the uh, movie? Like I said, War Path, that's going to be one of the awesome great parts to play as you're going through the main story. But after you've completed the game, um, can you go back and uh, play the game with you know characters that might be good and or bad that aren't necessarily in the movie, but that you can play only after you finish the game? We do have some unlockable things. Uh, I'm going to get into too many details with it. Uh, at this point, but one of the things that is, is, is uh, you know, we built the, the, the game, we built it around specific characters. So each of those levels is very specifically built around the things that make them special. That was the approach we took. We said, okay, well, you're showing up to be Ironhide, let me give you the most Ironhide experience ever. And to have you play through as a different character kind of breaks a lot of the things that are in there. We do have a lot more characters, and Warpath is a character you will get to play, not a single player, but we in multiplayer. So you will be, you will be playable in multiplayer. Fantastic. Now, I look forward to watching the movie when it comes out this June 29th, and you know, playing the game yeah, as well. Um, and with the new, like, uh, Transformers, when it first, you know, the original Transformers came in, you had this new robotic look, and a lot of like, debate whether, you know, it's better or it's going to fly. And there's an audience out there for that, to be sure. But one thing I'd like to let you guys know as well as everyone I are Transformers who just love every aspect of it. It didn't start with the movies. It started way back when most of us, when we saw that television show, that we got to know the voices, we got to know the characters. Any chance for the love of God and the love of us Transformers fans, as well as you yourselves, for a Transformers Generation 1 based on the cartoon television show in the future? Any chance for that whatsoever from you guys? I'm in studio. There's some applause back right there. Question. Suddenly that character just 
It's, it's, it's like here you go. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so, 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 so. Sorry. We got, we got that for any more. Yeah, I think the maybe two more quick questions. Two more questions. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, well, I have two questions. Um, for sound wave, it was more of a side of um, It was like a car with a random cassette thing on it that had very cassette players, the, um, his minions and stuff. Would, are you going to be doing that again, or are you going to change it somehow? Um, sound wave is one of those characters that, uh, I mean, you know, he, he, he has uh, the way that he's portrayed in the, in, in the movies. And, uh, that's something that we have to stay true to, um, no matter how much we might like one thing or the other. Um, and uh, I, I, I would like to talk more about something. Unfortunately, I can't right now. Michael Bay would kill us. <laughs> and um, well, I was watching the trailer. Uh, I saw it looks like a, a police car, like the stealth mode thing. And is that barricade? Is he going to be coming back? Um, barricade uh, is not one of the characters in our game. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just crushing your dreams. They just saw it right there. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, um, but uh, there are other characters that are, that are in there, and uh, uh, one of them does, it, it does have that uh, that vibe, the, the same police car vibe. That okay, thank you. Thank you. Let's give him a big round of applause.